We all live on Earth, but have you ever thought about what our planet is composed of? Or what secrets lie deep within it? Well, imagine Earth as a massive puzzle with various layers waiting to be discovered. In Chapter 2 of your Class 7 Geography book, Inside Our Earth, get ready for an exciting journey as we explore and unravel the mysteries of our very own planet, Earth. What is Earth? So, what exactly is the Earth? Well, it is our ultimate homeland. It's a dynamic and ever-changing world, both on its surface and beneath it. The Earth can be divided into three main layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. These layers are like the different layers of an onion, each with its own unique characteristics. Let's solve a quick question. What is the uppermost layer of the Earth's surface called? The uppermost layer of the Earth's surface is called the crust. The three main layers of Earth include the crust which is 1% of Earth's volume, the mantle 84%, and the core, inner and outer combined, 15%. The outermost of all these three is the crust. Let's delve into the layers inside Earth. Interior of the Earth Starting at the top, we have the Earth's crust. It's the outermost layer that covers the Earth's surface. It's relatively thin compared to the rest of the layers, measuring about 35 kilometers under the continents and only 5 kilometers beneath the ocean floors. But what's really cool about the crust is that it has different compositions. The crust under the continents is rich in silica and alumina, so scientists call it seal, SI for silica and air for alumina. Meanwhile, the oceanic crust is mainly made up of silica and magnesium, earning it the name SEMA, SI for silica and MA for magnesium. Now, let's dig deeper, quite literally, into the earth. Just below the crust, we have the mantle. Extending down to about 2,900 kilometers beneath the earth's surface. And finally, we reach the innermost layer, the earth's core. This core is about 3,500 kilometers in radius and is primarily made up of nickel and iron. It's so special that scientists call it knife, Ni for nickel and Fe for ferrous, which means iron. But here is the twist, the Earth's core is not only made of nickel and iron, it's also incredibly hot and under tremendous pressure. In fact, it's like the hottest oven you can imagine. This high temperature and pressure deep in the Earth are responsible for some of the incredible phenomena we observe, like the generation of Earth's magnetic field. Do you know? What makes up the Earth's crust? The outermost layer of the Earth is composed of rocks. So, let's learn about rocks, their significance, and the various types they come in. Rocks Rocks are like the building blocks of our planet. They are natural masses of mineral matter that make up the Earth's crust. Imagine them as the sturdy bricks holding our world together. And guess what? Rocks come in all sorts of colors, sizes, and textures. Some are smooth like polished marble, while others are rugged like the surface of the moon. Now, let's dive into the three major types of rocks that make up the Earth's crust which are igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, and metamorphic rocks. Igneous rocks, these rocks have a fiery origin. When scorching hot magma from deep within the earth cools down, it becomes solid, just like how lava hardens when it flows out of a volcano. There are two main types of igneous rocks, extrusive igneous rocks and intrusive igneous rocks. Extrusive igneous rocks these rocks are born when molten lava bursts onto the Earth's surface and rapidly cools down. Think of it as making ice cubes by pouring water into a tray and putting it in the freezer. One famous example is basalt, which makes up the Deccan Plateau. Imagine, our very own land is built on a sea of solidified lava. Intrusive igneous rocks Sometimes, the magma decides to cool down deep inside the Earth's crust far from our eyes. When it solidifies there, we get intrusive igneous rocks. Granite is a shining example of this category. And guess what? 
the grinding stones we use to prepare spices and grains are made of granite. So, every time you cook, you're using a piece of the earth. Let's tackle a brief question to review what we have learned. Which rock is the molten magma made up of? The correct answer is igneous rock. Igneous rock or magmatic rock is made up of molten magma. Sedimentary rocks. These rocks have a fascinating story. Imagine rocks rolling down, breaking into small fragments, and then these tiny pieces coming together like a puzzle. These small fragments, called sediments, are transported, compressed, and hardened over time to form layers of rocks. Think of it as nature's recycling process. For instance, sandstone is made from grains of sand. But here is the twist these rocks can also contain hidden treasures like fossils of ancient plants, animals, and tiny microorganisms that once thrived on them. Metamorphic rocks. These rocks are like the Earth's shapeshifters. When igneous or sedimentary rocks find themselves in a hot spot under tremendous pressure, they undergo a transformation into metamorphic rocks. It's like they're getting a makeover. For example, Clay can change into slate, and limestone can become marble. And if the heat and pressure get too intense, these rocks can even melt down and become molten magma, eventually solidifying into igneous rocks again. It's like a never-ending cycle of change beneath our feet. Let us now uncover one of the Earth's most fascinating processes, the rock cycle. It's like a never-ending story of transformation, where rocks change from one type to another, and the earth plays a magnificent role in this drama. Imagine the rock cycle as a continuous journey of rocks. It all starts with molten magma deep within the earth. When this scorching hot magma cools down, it transforms into something incredible which is igneous rock. It's like magic happening beneath our feet. The next stop on our journey involves the weathering of igneous rocks. They break down into tiny particles, like grains of sand, and are transported by wind, water, and other natural forces. These particles then settle and slowly compress to form sedimentary rocks. It's like nature's recycling program at work. But the adventure doesn't stop there. When igneous or sedimentary rocks find themselves in hot spots deep within the Earth's crust, they undergo a dramatic transformation. Under intense heat and pressure, they change into metamorphic rocks. It's like they're getting a makeover for a grand occasion. But wait, there is more. Metamorphic rocks can't resist the urge to change again. When they are still under great heat and pressure, they melt down and become molten magma once more. And what does molten magma do? It cools down and solidifies into igneous rocks. It's a fantastic cycle that keeps going and going. Now, let's talk about the building blocks of rocks which are minerals. Minerals Minerals are like the secret ingredients of rocks. They are naturally occurring substances with specific physical properties and a definite chemical composition. These tiny treasures are incredibly important to humankind. Some minerals even serve as fuels, like coal, natural gas, and petroleum, which power our homes and vehicles. Think about it. When you turn on a light or start your car, you're harnessing the energy of these ancient minerals. Minerals are also the superheroes of industries. Iron, aluminum, gold, uranium, and many others are used to make everything from cars to smartphones. They're even found in medicines and fertilizers, playing a crucial role in our health and food production. So, students, in this chapter of Class 7 Geography, we have explored the fundamental concepts of what is Earth, interior of Earth, rocks, rock cycle, and minerals. These insights into our planet's composition and processes offer a deeper understanding of the world we call home.